Welcome back to our next installment on our Ford 73 program with Dandy Engines featuring FuelTech. We're with Frank. Last time we made some pretty decent numbers on a stock engine. We made 1,015 on E85. The engine was unopened. Um, it did it pretty easy. We had the smaller throttle body and the boost was around 19 PSI from memory. Yeah, it, it like for that low boost level, it was making great power out of the box with a small throttle body and you, you couldn't ask, oh, we even had the smaller belt and it, it was making the power consistently. Like a lot of crate aspirated engines that are destined for boost, there's some common upgrades that you've done, so let's have a look. After a couple of hit outs on the engine dyno, we're now in the engine room. You've pulled the, the motor apart. What did, you, what did you think first time? Well, I think they're amazingly built and very robust, hence why I could see we could keep throwing power at it and it just kept taking it. So the next combination or iteration is um, built for boost, so we've got rods, pistons, Correct. Basically a stronger piston, a stronger rod, like a steel top ring to put up with the heat that we're going to throw at the cylinders, pressure and camshaft and valve springs. And we're not doing anything radical with the compression, like we're bumping it up. We've just bumped it up half a point, and we'll see if that will uh, either help the power curve or take the timing out and lower the power curve, which I doubt it, but I think it will take it. So starting from the bottom, rods and pistons, common upgrade, but crank largely standard? Yeah, factory crankshaft. We added an additional roller thrust bearing and we also machine the nose of the crank to take an extra keyway so when the blower is driven off the, the main harmonic balancer, it doesn't rely on just the bolt holding it on, it actually has a keyway to lock it. From our earlier testing, that factory 6PK we know is not enough for where we want to take the blower and the combination. So something we've got a lot of experience with and we're excited to test is the 12PK. So double the belt width, which will be excellent for holding, holding those higher loads and the ATI balance is obviously the go-to for... It's the best harmonic dampener you can buy on the market. So, you know, definitely the, those rotors trying to turn and make pressure, they, they want to make the belt slip. So you've improved that with 12 PK in. Yeah. And the other challenge is the, the oil pump. I would have loved to have the standard oil pump in it, but the way the engine's been designed as a rear sump, most of the Fords in Australia have a front sump. So. The only sad part is we had to remove that factory pump that is a beautiful design pump and we just run an external pump which means we can run it on the outside of the engine and we can adjust it um, and with that integrated with that bracket that you guys have made in the pulley. And we'll drive that with the tooth belt off the back of the, the hub so that's going to be really versatile in terms of options for packaging with the engine. So let's move up to the valve train. What are we doing there? Well I'm going to run the standard lifters as they coped very well with the RPM that we were throwing at it and the boost we were throwing at it. And so we'll leave them alone. We'll probably upgrade the push rods to something that will allow us to rev it the engine a bit harder and, and take the extra valve spring. I have the cylinder head here that we're going to polish the chambers and take all the sharp edges off and basically just blend all the ports in but not obviously go overboard changing shapes and sizes too much. Maintain the factory valve size and um, see what, where it takes us. Well, let's get it buttoned up and strap it back to the dyno. I'm ready. Our TVS 2650 supercharger is the same from the previous test. A couple of changes on the front. We've got our larger 115 prototype throttle body and 12 PK drive system. Modest boost, it's made some pretty good numbers. Man, first up, I think it was like 12 and a half pound of boost. It made 1100 straight away uh, on a lower RPM than we were turning it last time. It goes to show that the camshaft being profiled for boost, it's really responded. With valve springs in the camshaft, you know, straight away you could hear the note was different and it's obviously shown it on the numbers. Now obviously we wanted to turn up the boost and we've done that, so we've pulled it down. The belt's held up really, really well, which is what we wanted from the bigger 12 PK. And at 19 PSI, we've seen some pretty great numbers. 
Yeah, like getting the fuel curve right and ignition curve right, it punched out 1300 pretty easy. Frank, we've got a few more combinations to test here on the dyno before we get this engine into a very special car and showcase it on our next instalment. So like and subscribe to Harrop TV for all of our content as released.